welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most notable times Dragon Ball instant transmissioned into other anime. <laughs> Number 20, Veldora Loves Dragon Ball. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. Storm Dragon? No. Veldora is a Super Saiyan. As one of the world's five true dragons, it's only natural that Veldora takes some cues from a show with dragon in its name. Are? But it's one thing to wink at the connection, and another to actually show him donning the golden locks. That's not even the end of it either. A few episodes later, Veldora puts his training to good use by unleashing an honest to god Kamehameha. He name drops it in everything. <laughs> Veldora reads a lot of manga in captivity, and clearly, he started with one of the greats. <laughs> Number 19, Cameo Chaos. My bride is a mermaid. You've got to pull out your magnifying glass if you want to catch all the Easter eggs in this anime. See that guy in the crowd with the orange gi and spiky hair? Yeah, three guesses who that is. Mr. Seto, there's a bus! I bet it's the one you said would be waiting for us at Zone D2! You know that? Goku's not alone, though. In another episode, both Vegeta and Trunks appear in the background of a classroom scene. That's useful info. Isn't Mr. Masa just the greatest? While My Bride is a Mermaid doesn't pull any attention to these cheeky guest stars, it wears its influences on its sleeve in other ways, like the episode where the characters literally start talking about Dragon Balls. Maybe these crossovers are Shenron's doing. What, did you stumble across some sort of magic lamp or maybe you gathered the seven Dragon Balls or something? Number 18, Ginyu Force Assemble. Aharen-san wa Hakarenai. Making new friends in high school can be tough. Luckily, no one brings people together like power-up screams, beam struggles, and life or death fights for survival. At least that's how it works in Aharen-san. During a visit to a town festival, Raido plans on how to take on all the festival games, resulting in the iconic Ginyu Force pose. Fingers crossed the Ginyu Force don't have a copyright on their iconic tableau, because this goes beyond mere imitation. Still, Raido is right about one thing. With that kind of precision, they'll win any game there easily. Number 17, Aren the Artist, The Disastrous Life of Psyche K. Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama left quite the legacy, and part of it goes by the name of Aren Kuboyasu. In art class, the transfer student proudly claims that he can draw any Dragon Ball character. Dragon Ball was he immediately puts his money where his pen is by sketching out Birza, and honestly, it's not half bad. However, the same can't be said about the work of fellow student Kaido. His drawings are so bad, his classmates tell him to apologize to Toriyama. <laughs> These blatant name drops prove that even a comedy anime like Psyche K respects Dragon Ball. Number 16, Dragon Maid Z, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. When it comes time for some roughhousing, these dragon ladies go full Dragon Ball, and it's not even subtle. Everything from the auras to the choreography are ripped straight out of Z's most legendary moments. To really hammer it home, Kana charges up a purple blast that looks an awful lot like a technique from Dragon Ball. Which of course creates a beam struggle with Toru's own flashy attack. It's a loving callback to some of anime's most recognizable fights, but coming from a show that also has Dragon in its title, we shouldn't even be surprised. <laughs> Number 15, Damien's Vision, Spy Family. There's nothing undercover about this illusion. <laughs> 
While training for a high-stakes dodgeball tournament, the precocious Damien starts a new workout routine that includes scaling jungle gyms, slides, and a massive tire swing. The catch is that, in his head, Damien's actually on Namek, holding back what looks like Frieza's death ball. <laughs> Even though the words Dragon Ball are never used, this moment hits home because it's more than an empty reference. Damien is a composed kid using Goku's adventures to physically and mentally push himself further beyond. Really, there's nothing more Dragon Ball than that. MVP! Number 14, Bochi being Bochi. Bochi the Rock. With how much her social anxiety gets the better of her, Bochi would really benefit from some of that classic Saiyan pride. Unfortunately, she takes more after Yamcha to start. <laughs> Following a particularly nasty fight with some birds, Bochi's left in the same hilarious position made famous by Yamcha's infamous death in Dragon Ball Z. It's an all too fitting metaphor for Bochi's emotional state. On the bright side, she turns things around a few episodes later by channeling a good old fashioned Super Saiyan transformation. As windows in Bochi's self confidence, these Dragon Ball nods basically tell a story in their own right. <laughs> Number 13, Crossovers and Connections. Good luck, girl. If you're a Dragon Ball fan, this is the show for you. Even if you don't care for Good Luck Girl's story, there's so many nods to Akira Toriyama's work, you're bound to walk away enjoying the ride. Sometimes the wink is a quick cutaway showing Momji and her partner dressed up as Goku and Bubbles. <laughs> Sometimes, dog god Momu literally goes Super Saiyan while Krillin and Roshi watch. And sometimes, Bobby shouts out Vegeta's name as he dies in the exact way Nappa did. The nods are about as overt as you can get, and in a way, that only makes them funnier. Number 12, Itadori's and Otaku. Jujutsu Kaisen. There isn't a single action anime today that doesn't owe something to Dragon Ball, and Jujutsu Kaisen knows it. In fact, Itadori pretty much says as much himself. When he's learning about cursed energy, he puts the power system into simpler terms, equating it to all sorts of legendary anime techniques. He mentions Yu Yu Hakusho's Spirit Gun, Bleach's Bankai, Naruto's Rasengan, and yes, even some attacks from Dragon Ball 2. Given how upset Itadori is that he can't do a Kamehameha, something tells us Jujutsu Kaisen is well aware of Dragon Ball's reputation. Number 11, Fusion Dance. Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei. Since the fusion dance is supposed to combine two people into something greater, it's ironic that it nearly did the same with a pair of anime. That's right, Dragon Ball characters aren't the only ones fusing around here. Nozomu and Matoi have their posing down pat too. They don't merge bodies or anything like that, but there's still no mistaking that routine. <laughs> Since Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei is a tongue in cheek satirization of Japanese media, it'd be strange if it didn't have a couple of hints towards Dragon Ball. Plus, including something like the fusion dance is a joke that works on multiple levels. <laughs> Number 10 Stas's Kamehameha, Blood Lad. One of the most blatant examples of another shonen going all in with the DBZ vibes, it's clear from the offset that the punk vampire is a huge fan of Goku, so much so he was willing to copy his signature attack during the battle against Akim. 
You have to love how badly Staz is fanboying here as he powers up to unleash a legit Kamehameha, while all Fuyumi can do is flail in the background for fear of getting charged with a copyright claim. Me. <laughs> Number 9, Akari goes Super Saiyan, Yuru Yuri. Turns out that when it comes to gag anime, Dragon Ball is the gift that keeps on giving. Especially when it comes to cute Moe girls, oddly enough. <laughs> While making idle talk about how to lose weight and get in shape, two members of the amusement club somehow end up in a skit featuring Akari letting loose her inner strength. Apparently, one way to get ripped is to tear off your buns and become a spiky haired warrior of legend. <laughs> If only it were that easy. Number 8, Yamcha Death Scene. I can't understand what my husband is saying. As any sane man knows, angering your wife is very much the equivalent of having a Cyberman strapped to you and ready to self destruct. While on the hunt for an old ramen haunt, the husband makes the rather tragic mistake of embarrassing his bride in public by constantly asking Siri to say rather, well, inappropriate words. The response is so swift and so brutal that he meets the exact same fate as Yamcha, including the pitiful pose and crater of shame. Because nothing screams, I died like a moron quite like that. Number 7, Hentai Ha! MM. It may be stupid, but it's the best kind of stupid. In a series where the lead is a self described super masochist, surrounded by others with equally excessive issues, the last thing we expect was an elsewhere episode that saw him turning into a Super Saiyan. It's very much a tongue in cheek parody. One that goes the extra mile by having Taro swap out the Kamehameha for something a little more on the vulgar side. <laughs> Number 6, Virgin Ball. A 30 year old's health and physical education. Because when faced with the threat of ultimate seduction, there's no better counter than to unleash all your accumulated virginity into a single attack. The series itself is a bit of an oddball, focusing on the antics of adults later in their life dealing with their lack of bed breaking, and yet it still finds time to have a scene of one of its sexually denied stars battle against a voluptuous temptress. <laughs> Not sure what's weirder, seeing the spirit bomb parodied in this way, or that this guy might have unlocked Ultra Instinct before Goku did. Number 5, Chala Head Chala. Lucky Star. This one is a bit more elusive, but hardcore fans who grew up watching the original Japanese could never forget this particular tune. During the credits of one episode, the show shifts over to a karaoke bar, where we hear Konata and the gang letting loose with an awfully familiar jingle. Sure, it doesn't have the same gravitas as the original, but we know Dragon Ball Z's official theme song when we hear it. Chala Head Chala is a pretty tricky one to handle, so good on Konata for giving it a go. Number 4, Vaccine Man, One Punch Man. Granted, he only appears in his original form for a few moments before mutating into his much more bestial side, but there's no way we could mistake those antenna. Not sure if he came down with a terrible disease, but Saitama's debut foe is very much akin to a citizen of Namek. 
this little easter egg gets doubly meta in the dub, since Piccolo's voice actor, Christopher Sabat, also voiced Vaccine Man. You're a fast one. Who are you? Purple Namekian confirmed, with none of the handy regeneration. I was formed from the pollution man wrought upon the Earth. I am Vaccine Man! Number 3, Super Saiyan Blue, Flip Flappers. Why wouldn't someone want to bust out the ultimate Saiyan form if given the chance? After her friend Kokona is turned into a killing machine, it falls to Papika to knock her out of it. <laughs> and by that, we mean engage in a literal dragon brawl, complete with similar sound effects, animation style, and of course, someone screaming really loudly while the hair explodes into a completely different color. <laughs> Number 2 Don Patch does goodbye Tien. Bo 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 bo. Given the ludicrous places this comedy is willing to go, it's shocking we didn't see them parody Dragon Ball more. No! Sure, they did their take on the fusion dance, but the real gold is when Don Patch goes all in and recreates the scene where Chiaotzu blows himself up in order to protect Tien. Bo bo bo, sorry. Only here, instead of the feels, we're given the giggles at how ridiculous the whole thing looks. We'll give him a point for pulling off that dying expression, though. No, don't! Don't punch! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Hishikata Kills Cell and Frieza Gintama No anime is safe from ridicule, mockery, and parody when it comes to this series, and Dragon Ball is no exception. There are honestly too many moments to count, but our favorite would have to go to the time the bad boy of the Shinsengumi lacerated the franchise's two most iconic villains just to get himself a cigarette. <laughs> sure, these were poor caricatures named Cello and Brita, but look at them. They're about as close to the originals as they can get without getting sued by Toei Animation. Just goes to show Hijikata's desire for nicotine is stronger than Vegeta. <laughs> Did we miss any of your favorite Dragon Ball references? Let us know in those comments below. 